Now, let's go to another flank of it. We leave... Be before you go to the next flank of it, I think it's very important, again, to say that we invited the AP, APC representative um, from Aqua Ebom, and we're yet to see them. I understand that they're coming in a little later. But then, you know, you have won the elections. Yes. Uh, in spite of all that you enumerate, you have won the elections. They also claim, and we had a lot of that uh, argument, that you had INEC on your side. How do you respond to that? Well, I, I don't understand what they mean by having INEC. I recall that this, uh, this allegation had been made before. But recall that Igini, Igini's first posting in, in, uh, in INEC is not in Aquaibo. That's Mr. Mike Igini. Yeah, Mr. Mike Igini. Igini conducted the elections where Adam Sushomole won. Igini conducted elections in Imo State, PDP lost. Igini has written and criticized the PDP conducted primaries in Cross River States before. And therefore, when the posting of Igini to Aquaibo was not born, done by the Aquaibo State government, INEC. And Igini has been there for over a year. So Igini was not posted for election specific purposes. He was posted like other Reds were posted. And he came to Aquaibo. Now, in the entire processes leading to this election, everything has been subjected to party, political party participation. When they complained, remember that you interviewed the time and while I was in Lagos. And I said that the Guinea had called a meeting of all the parties and submitted the list. Incidentally, the list of coalition and returning officers were not done by Guinea. It was done from Abuja. And recall what he turned and said to him. He said he now has confidence because a lot of federal government staff are on that list and that that list came from the federal government, if you recall that interview. Therefore, why are you blaming a Guinea for simply announcing a list that I like national sent? And the man simply also said, this is the list. Please, all party agents, show me anyone on this list who is partisan and I'll remove the person. Mark, where? Everyone went through that list. The APC representative was there. They could, he's just giving a dog a bad name to kill. Now, the only problem they have with, the only problem Guinea has with them, which is legal, is the fact that he, by INEC regulations, elections will start by eight and will end by two, or until the last person on the line votes. But that's the law. But Senator Pabio, my former boss, sat on, when the president came to launch his campaign in the South South, picked up a microphone on a podium and said, Mr. President, in a quiet boom state, in three hours, we'll give you the result. So the only blockade, they didn't see the law as the blockade. They saw a guinea who is implementing the law of 8 to 2 as being the problem. So that is why they started asking that. The only problem we have in returning elections in three hours is Mikey Guinea. But that Mikey Guinea means INEC. That INEC means the law. Because even if you finish voting by 10, Malkwe, you need to wait till 2. That's the law. You cannot announce that result until 2. Because someone who knows the law can come by five minutes to two, and you must give him, you must accredit that person for the person to vote. So how did you expect to give results in three hours? So their entire problem with the Guinea, which is why APC is the only party having issues with the Guinea. All other parties contested that elections. Ezekiel Yatok was on, uh, on a sister TV program and said, listen, all the processes leading to this have been fairly square. Now, at the point of distribution of materials, everyone cites the materials and confirms it. At the point of card reader issuance, everyone, every member of a political party, the representative the, will cite it. At some point, there was a scare when a, a, a political party mentioned that uh, some printing was happening. So Igini stopped the entire process and sent policemen there. When coalition had finished in every other local government in Ikori Kmenese in the district, and the only local government left was Senudum, which was Senator Kwabu's local government, where he physically went to the INEC office and held everyone hostage, where the observers were beaten, the South African observers were beaten up, where police prevented any other person. The deputy state chairman of my party was manhandled, beaten up physically by the distinguished senator. He alone sat in that office. Which senator beat who? Senator Kwabu beat up a former member of the House of Representatives who is the deputy, speak, a deputy chairman of my party. On, a, on election day? On the, night, on the night of election, that's the eve of that election, when coalition was going on. At the INEC office. You have evidence to this? The evidence are abound. We put this out and we also, we are going to be applying to INEC for fear to prosecute the senator for that. He assaulted the gentleman, beat him up, and handed him over to the security. Operatives to continue the security operatives that came with him. Mm. Sunye Kekeri Nokun is a former member of the House of Representatives. Okay. And what was the argument? The argument was that a result was brought where elections did not hold. And the gentleman said no. He started saying, You betrayed me. This is my local government. Even if I'm supposed to fail everywhere else, should I fail here? And in court, we'll say a lot of things. 
but there are evidence we are keeping that will bring out in court. So I am very interested. I mean, because I mean, we've heard Senator Pabio say he cannot fail elections. Uh, he did not lose his mandate was stolen mm -hmm. from him. Uh, but we have, from what I can hear you say, it would seem that the security agencies uh, did not do so badly. If, if Mr. Mackey Guinea could send security operatives to a place, you know, to when he hears a report and the policemen go to try and see how they can forestall uh, violence or whatever it is from breaking out. It means that they were, they carried out their role as they also have. Mark, if I give you oddlies, who will the oddly listen to? Very simple. How many oddlies does one person have? No, because of the heightened tension they had put and because of the fact that few hours, few days to elections, there was a leaked audio where the APC candidate was heard planning to bomb the INEC secretariat. So you now have a lot of security personnel attached to the office of INEC. And therefore, he could at that point dispatch those people. And again, because the media community had kept them on their toes while things were happening, we were alerting the world. So even the civil population, they were seeing themselves online, were flying drones over their heads, were sending pictures that there are pictures of Senator Pablo inside INEC office. So at that point, too, with the security coming there, the, the GOC 6th Division, General Sarab, was there with him. So things had to change. There are situations, people thrive, you know, evil thrives in darkness. It thrives in secrecy. Immediately it becomes open. Even the evildoers themselves are aware of the consequences. So in that interlude of things happening, mm -hmm. that's a, we're now going to the issue of losing election. In 2007, Mark, the facts are sacred. The facts are there. Senator Kwabio, my former boss, remember, he's my former boss. Senator Kwabio did not win the nominations of the PDP. So when he says he cannot lose the election, I, I wonder. Mark, but anybody can lose the election. In this country, we've seen people lose elections. People whose names now win elections for them in death lost elections. I won't mention their names. But in the eastern part of Nigeria, people have lost senatorial elections, but their names in death has kept people as governor. So that's not it. Now, it is this same pride and arrogance that cost the election. Now, in 2007, the rule, the principle on our guidelines was that for anyone to emerge as a governorship candidate, you must win 50% of the vote plus one or more. So the Dr. did not win that. That is why there was a rerun rescheduled for Akwaibo. But it took President Obasanjo and Obama Oforeka, who was Secretary of the Government, to say, listen, we, we, this, this nomination has been very hard won, you know, so let's not go there. We'll further divide the party and may give the opposition a chance. He simply had the simple majority. He shouldn't forget the past. So how can you say you can't lose the election? Are you the one voting for yourself? What campaigns did he do? He did not do any, any campaign of his own in any of the local governments. There are 10 local government areas in his, in his territorial district. He lost clearly in eight, one in a small margin in Ikorik Bene and one in his place with serious intimidation. If you do a, 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 a for elections, a, a, a option A for elections, he will see himself in his own local government. Why can't he allow elections to hold there? Why are you intimidated in his own unit? Why are you intimidating people if you are that popular? You see, people, I told people, remember, several interviews, I said, that PDP had a winning machine. In 1998, when this party was about to be formed, there were gladiators who came together and said, listen, let's form a party that will harmonize this state. Incidentally, PDP had a better grip of those political gladiators and created a winning machinery. Senator Pabio is not a founding member of the PDP. He came in 2002. After we had won, we won local government elections conducted by INEC. He was not there. He doesn't know how it was won. Mm. So now the winning strategy and machine is there in the PDP. He only came and stayed there. And you cannot deny he did well. I'm not one of the people because he has left today who say he did. No, he did well. He tried. So Dr. Pabia has charisma. But there's, a, there's an extent to which you can take your charisma. And now at the point he, he has taken himself to the point where the people see, the people at Kwabom see him as the one who is shackling them. And this vote for Udom Emmanuel in his second term is a vote of liberation. Mm. There was so much rejoicing in every part of Akwaibum. I and the governorship candidate of the JPC live on the same street. In our streets, the only house that wasn't rejoicing was his.
Well, you have finally won the elections, you, even though you've complained about security presence and you've talked about instances, you've given instances where the security did not do so badly, in my opinion, from mm. what you have said. It's not all of that. Uh, so um, let us wait and hear what the APC representative will say. But well, we have to thank you for coming on thank Sunrise today. In the ML Bongo, he's the publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party in Akwaibom State.